So last week we made a video on how to get your dev environment set up to work with Airbyte on Mac OS, but don't think we forgot about y'all on Windows. That's what this video is gonna be about. At the end of this, you'll be able to run Airbyte in no time using Windows. So let's get started. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to make sure is you enable Hyper-V in your system's BIOS. The location of this setting is going to differ based off of the manufacturer of your motherboard. So make sure you find who that manufacturer is. For me, it's Asus. Find the manual online, or if you have the in-hand version, go ahead and use that and then see where you can enable Hyper-V. But please make sure that you enable it and save your settings. Once that's enabled and you're booted into Windows, let's install and enable WSL2. WSL stands for Windows Subsystem for Linux, and it's gonna let us run Linux-like commands like bash or grep straight through Windows without needing to dual boot or spin up another VM. So let's go ahead and open up a command prompt. Let me go here and run it as an administrator. And up here, I'm gonna run WSL with a flag install. So that's two hyphens and install. And it should run you through the installation if you don't have it installed already. I do. If you get set with this help flag, that means you also have it installed. And what we'll need to do is install a Linux distribution. So if I do WSL list flag and then the online flag, it should list us every available Linux distro that we can install. You have Ubuntu, Debian, Kali Linux. So you can choose whichever way you want. I'm going to go with Ubuntu 20.4 as the version I want to install. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to do WSL install flag. I'm going to add the hyphen D flag for distribution. And then after that is going to be the name that you want to install. So for me, I'm going to do Ubuntu. Make sure you spell it correctly. Ubuntu hyphen 20. 0.04. I'm going to hit enter. And now we're downloading Ubuntu. All right. So now that it's downloaded and installed, you can see that we're spun up on this screen. We have a new terminal and it's asking us to set up our Unix user. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Cool. Now you can see that I am in the WSL file system using Ubuntu version 20.04. Now that this is all installed, let's go ahead and install Windows Terminal. Windows Terminal is a different kind of terminal that's going to let us work with WSL and the Linux distro we've installed a lot easier. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to do my start menu and go to the Microsoft Store. Once I'm in the Microsoft Store, I'm going to do Windows Terminal in the search bar up top, and it should be the first result. Go ahead and install it. And once it's installed, go ahead and give it an open. And as you can see, it looks very, very similar to command prompt. But the key difference here is going to be up here. We can add new tabs and we can even choose the Linux distro and it'll show us that we're in it. So if we click this drop down arrow right here, you can see that we can open Windows PowerShell command prompt and Azure Cloud Shell. But now we see Ubuntu 20.4, which is the Linux distro we installed. So let's go ahead and click that and it'll load us directly into WSL, which is a much better experience than using PowerShell command prompt on their own. So by default, Ubuntu comes installed with version 3.8.2 of Python 3. We're gonna need to upgrade to the latest version of Python 3 in order to run Airbyte. Airbyte requires a minimum of version 3.9. In the last video for Mac OS dev environment, I made a mistake and I said that you needed specifically version 3.9. That is wrong. It, you just need a minimum of version 3.9. So if you have the latest version of Python, you're good to go. But first things first, let's just make sure that all packages and everything else is up to date in Linux. So let's do sudo apt up update and and sudo apt upgrade. Enter in your root password and let that run. Three hours later. So once all the packages are installed, we're going to need to update Python 3. As I mentioned, it, it comes pre-installed with 3.8 and that is not up to date. Unfortunately, Ubuntu's repositories doesn't point to the latest release and the highest we can get is 3.8. And so we're gonna have to do some manual installations of version 3.10, which is the latest version of Python 3 as of this recording. So back in the terminal, let's go ahead and run some commands. And don't worry, all these commands will be listed down in the description below. So you don't have to keep manually typing these out. So in the terminal, I'm gonna go ahead and copy and paste this, but it's sudo add apt repository and we're gonna add the dead snakes git repository. So I'm gonna go ahead and run that. I'm going to press continue to keep adding it or press enter. Once that's done, I'm going to run sudo apt update to upgrade the repositories again, since we just installed new ones. And I want to list out 
and grep now that i can actually do that in a bash terminal python 3.10 so let me go ahead and copy and paste this but it's apt list and then we're going to grep python 3.10 and as you can see it lists out python 3.10 which means it's available to us now all that we have to do is run sudo apt install python 3.10 we want to continue absolutely so now if we run python 3 dash dash version you can see that python 3.10.7 is now being pointed to so we have the latest version of python now we need to make sure that we install the correct module in order to install pip and vm into our environment i'm going to go ahead and copy and paste sudo apt install python 3.10 slash dist utils go ahead and run that and this gives us the ability to now install pip and vm properly so i'm going to go ahead and copy and paste this command in here as well which is was just a curl command and now we'll do sudo python 3.10 get pip.py and to confirm that pip is now installed we'll do pip dash dash version and it should spit out the current version of pip next we'll need vmv and again i will go ahead and, and copy and paste this command over which is sudo apt install python 3.10 hyphen vmv go ahead and install that and now all the packages for python are installed and we can continue on further in the tutorial git is going to be the next package we need git does come pre-installed with wsl but we can just update it since it comes pre-configured with a specific version and as you know sudo apt get install git is going to be the command we run to install and update git Next, we're going to want to configure our config file for Git so that way it recognizes our user. So let me go ahead and clear the terminal. I'm going to copy and paste these commands, but essentially it is the same thing. Git config global user.name and then user.email. Input those that are relevant to your user and then hit enter and then you should be good to go. The final things we'll need to install are both Docker desktop as well as Docker compose. Now, we're not going to do that through the terminal. We're going to head over to our web browser, open that up, and then just go to Docker and go to the Docker website. Now, if you install Docker desktop through the website, Docker compose also comes with it. So you don't have to worry about installing Docker compose on its own. Let's go ahead and save that. I'm going to put it in my downloads. I'm just gonna put it here go ahead and run it and then we'll just run through the installer really quick all right now that docker is successfully installed there is a setting we need to enable to ensure that it runs correctly on wsl so let's head over here we're going to type in docker i'm going to go go ahead and run it i'm going to go ahead and accept it cool now that it's starting up we're going to go to the cog wheel up here let it load So there's a couple of checkboxes you are, you're gonna wanna make sure that are enabled. The first being use the WSL2 based engine. That is very, very key in making sure that that is checked. Head into the resources tab, go into WSL integrations, and then make sure that the installed version of Linux that you chose is checkmarked in the enable integrations and then apply and restart. One more thing I almost forgot was go to the Kubernetes tab and make sure that enable Kubernetes is enabled and then apply and restart. If you need to install it, go ahead and install that. And now that it's enabled, we can head over back to our terminal. I'm going to CD into my development directory and then CD into Airbyte. Now that I'm in here, all I have to do is run docker compose up. And now you can see we're finally booting up all of Airbyte's containers using Docker inside of WSL on a Windows machine. So we're going to let Docker do its thing, but once the log start showing up and it gives us the airbyte banner then we can head over to localhost port 8000 and see the airbyte ui pop up now we saw that the banner showed up so now we can head over to localhost port 8000 and see that airbyte is now spun up and we can effectively start using it and pulling our data so setting up your dev environment doesn't have to be so hard hopefully this video helped all of you on windows set it up yourself and get rolling with Airbyte in just a couple minutes. If you are interested in a video on how we set that up for a Mac OS or a Linux machine, then you can go ahead and click up here somewhere and get sent to that video if you want to check it out. But anyways, we'll see y'all on the next video. Peace.